All right, so what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to learn about market efficiency. Now, market efficiency is a really big deal in economics because one of the things that we're concerned about in economics is resources being used to the most of their ability, to the best of their ability. Okay, so we want to get the most out of every worker that we count. Now that doesn't mean that we're going to abuse workers. That's not what market efficiency is. Market efficiency means that if a worker is hired to work eight hours and they can accomplish so much work in eight hours, that they will accomplish all of that work in eight hours. That if we uh, chop down a tree, that we're going to get the most that we can out of that tree. And if we build a, a computer or a, some, you know, a, a drill or a saw, that we're going to get the most that we can out of that saw or that drill. Market efficiency is related to macroeconomics. In fact, this is one of the places where microeconomics and macroeconomics touch each other. Okay, So in microeconomics, we really want uh, our markets themselves to be efficient. We want the producers to produce as much as they can for what the buyers want to buy. Okay, But we're going to boil this idea of market efficiency down to one basic idea, something you're already familiar with. Market efficiency in a principles of microeconomics class, for lack of any other term, uh, market efficiency basically means that there is no deadweight loss in that particular market. Okay, so a market is efficient if there is no deadweight loss. Now, I want to remind you what a uh, deadweight loss is, that it's related to two other concepts that we learned. One of them is called consumer surplus, if you remember that, and producer surplus. Okay, and what we learned was this is that. Consumer surplus, if we have a market, we have a supply and demand curve, we know that wherever the, um, wherever the supply and demand curve intersect, that that will give us our, oops, that's ugly, that's not a straight line, but anyways, that's our equilibrium price, and it will also give us our equilibrium quantity, okay? And what we learned is this, is that uh, this price that's being charged is being charged of all the buyers. Even though at a smaller quantity, let's say down here, the buyer is actually willing to pay a higher price. So some of the buyers are willing to pay a higher price than the actual price that's being charged in the market. And this triangle above the price line, but below the demand curve, that region is what we call consumer surplus, right? And this region below the demand curve is what we refer to as producer surplus because at smaller quantities, the producer is willing to sell at a lower price. At this quantity, we go up to the supply curve and go over and this is the price that the supplier is willing to, at this price, the supplier is willing to produce this quantity. And therefore, this triangle here is referred to as producer surplus. There will always be surplus in the market, whether it's consumer surplus or producer surplus. But here's what happens is if the equilibrium price is not the reigning price in the market, if the price is either higher than equilibrium price, so let's say that the price is up here for some reason or another, who knows the reason, if the price is higher than equilibrium price, well we've learned previously that that means that quantity supplied will be higher than quantity demanded, right? And we also learned that whatever the smaller quantity is, that's actually how much will be produced and sold in, the, in, in that market. So this is going to be the quantity that is produced, that's how much, and that's, all, that's how much is going to be produced, and that's how much is going to be sold. And so what that means is that this region right here, this triangle in the middle here, I'm just reminding you, we learned this previously, will not have production. It will be a loss. This is, there's a little bit of a loss of consumer surplus and a little bit of a loss of producer surplus. So producers and consumers have lost a little bit, a little bit of their surplus. And that region is what we call a dead weight loss. We're going to call it DWL. So this is our dead weight loss. Okay. 
That's our dead weight loss. When that happens, the, the reason that that's happening is because some party, probably the producer, who is not charging this price, so now look at this region right here. This is now the price up here. The producer has increased their surplus. They, they have a much larger producer surplus now, and the consumers have a much smaller surplus. And the reason that the producers are doing that is because they're trying to maximize their profit. They're, they're trying to make more profit than they would if their price was, uh, was the market e equilibrium, okay? But when the producers do that, it creates a dead weight loss in the market. And, and do you see this, this difference in produ production? We would have produced this quantity, but because we're now producing this quantity, there is a loss in surplus for consumers, and there is also a loss in production. There's actually gonna be less utility in the economy because consumers are, gonna pr are going to consume less stuff. And, and this, uh, this uh, is an, an, an inefficiency in the market, okay? So basically, any time that a market has a deadweight loss, that market is inefficient. Now, the question of whether efficiency is okay or not okay, in many ways, is a normative question. For example, the owners of the business that are earning more profit they think the dead weight loss is good because by their judgment, they want to earn more profit. But here's the key. In this economics class and, and most basic principles of economics uh, ideas aren't trying to maximize what's good for a few people. We're usually trying to maximize what is good for society, I guess you could could say. Okay. Now, again, that's a normative issue, but nonetheless, if we're trying to go for what's best for society overall, then inefficiency is a bad thing. I say bad. I put it in quotes. It's, it's not as good for society because we're losing on surplus and we're losing on production, which means that we're also losing on utility overall. Okay. So from a macroeconomic economic point of view, Deadweight loss is not good. Inefficiency is not good. But from, a, from an individual company point of view, they don't really care if, they're, if there's an inefficiency in the market because it turns out they're transforming that inefficiency into more profit for them. Now, we can see the exact same circumstance with a lower price. We can have a supply and demand curve. Okay, demand, supply, quantity, price. All right, here's our equilibrium price right here, okay? The government can get involved and set what is called a price ceiling. So if they say, well, the price isn't allowed, we're gonna put P with a little C here, that's price ceiling. If the government says that this is the highest the price is allowed to be, well, we'll have a lot of demand but less supply, right? Now, the suppliers aren't going to produce any more than this. Equilibrium quantity would have been over here. So here's equilibrium quantity. And do you remember previously we said that whichever one is smaller, quantity demanded or quantity supplied, whichever one is smaller, that's the one that's actually going to happen for real. So suppliers are not going to produce any more than this. So this is going to be the real quantity in this market produced. And this difference right here, that's a loss in production because of this price ceiling. And what's gonna happen here now is if we get rid of this equilibrium price, you can see that we now have this larger space is consumer surplus and this smaller triangle is producer surplus. And that's when the government gets involved usually and says, hey producer, you're not allowed to charge a price that's higher than this. But now what's happening is the government is causing the inefficiency. Because do you see this line right here for the actual quantity? Here's our triangle, that's our dead weight loss. Now the dead weight loss isn't happening because the company is charging a higher price and trying to get more profit. What's happening now is the inefficiency is being introduced by the government in their effort to protect consumers. 
and that's dangerous. Governments should be careful about instituting price ceilings. What they really should do is encourage, somehow or another, encourage the price to move near or as close to equilibrium prices as, as possible. Because the only time that we do not have a dead weight loss, we're going to write this down, we will only have zero dead weight loss when the price is equal to the equilibrium price. So when, when the price in the market is at equilibrium price, supply, demand, quantity, price, when the price is at equilibrium price, we will have no dead weight loss. There's no triangle in here. And we have full consumer surplus and full producer surplus. And here's what you need to understand in terms of market structures. Efficiency in market structures is this, is uh, perfect competition is the market structure that gets its price from equilibrium price. And that means that perfect competition is an efficient market structure. Okay, so you're going to write that down. Uh, let's put it right here. Perfect competition is an efficient market structure. Okay. And what we're about to do is we're about to investigate other kinds of market structures. We're going to talk about monopoly in the next segment, and eventually we're going to talk about monopolistic competition, and we're going to talk about oligopoly. And while we're having conversations about those things, we are going to, uh, we are going to talk about their efficiency, how efficient they are, and whether that efficiency can be sustained or whether that, how that efficiency is violated.